Hi cinema attendees, so today is a bit different from previous videos because today is a list of vaguely related items. I've always loved the Seedle experience, the taste of popcorn, the comfy seats, the big screen with speakers that love to destroy your ears when necessary. I can honestly see why all of Hollywood's pretentious crowd love it. So out of boredom and thinking it's a creative enough idea, I'm going to rank all the films I've seen on the big screen. Yep, every single one. Yes, that does sound crazy, so let's explain this a bit. First off, to explain this in the simplest terms possible, from here on out, nothing I say is canon to the character of Sponge Liam. You know, the cartoon nerd who wears his own name and hangs out with a giant egg. I'm only saying this because this video depends on personal stories, and I'm not going to want to keep track of all of this when I'm writing one-off lines in a video about cereal boxes or something. Okay, makes sense, cool. Now I'm allowed to explain that my family and I are not very liquid, and the number of films on this list is only 18. Things are getting better, like five of the entries here were from last year alone, but still, a lot of this was either school trips or tagalongs. So TLDR, don't be surprised there's a lot of kid movie garbage on here, alright? Cool, let's get started then with... Number 18, Doolittle. It's bad. Like, really bad. Only saw because of a school trip, and even then, it wasn't worth it. Sonic was a week out, they could've waited. Wh why did they put this on me? The, the, the conflict end was a fault joke! S save me! Number 17, A Secret Life of Pets. This one was a birthday tag-along thing, I can't really remember, and it's boring. Didn't think that at the time, of course, but in retrospect, what a basic film! What sticks out about this one from any other basic animated kids film? Nothing! It's not awful, but there's nothing of value to level it out easily, which may be worse than being just awful. Number 16, The Spickle Me 3. Another tag along sort of thing, and yes, while I do have nostalgic attachment to this franchise, this is easily the most inconsistent and pointless film in the series. Have you seen the trailer for Fool? Even they ignore it. Number 15, Trolls. Wow, we're going up there. School trip. I dug it at the time. The songs were great. But nowadays, I, I think it's just aggressively fine. If you're a Trolls fan, please don't haunt me for this opinion. Number 14, The Kid Would Be King. I was one of the two people in the world to see this one, so that's kinda cool. It was a nozzle school trip, and I remember my brother hating this one so much that I convinced myself it's awful too. But it's really just fine. Like, not amazing, and from what I remember, it should be a half hour shorter, but I think it has enough quality aspects to give it a nozzle chance one these days. Number 13, Soul, Love, and Sundor. I saw this on National Cinema Day for three dollars, and while I understand the hate, I don't think it's that bad. Some of the jokes worked, and I think its emotional core was well done, so it's not amazing, but it didn't kill my dog, so I think I'm okay with it. Number 12, Iron Man 3, I think. I am 90% sure I saw Iron Man 3 at somebody's birthday party sort of thing, but I don't remember the film itself, I just remember being in a seedle, and I'm 90% sure it was playing Iron Man 3. Ah. I rewatched it somewhat recently, and I think it's solid, not the best MCU film, but solid, but take this entry with a grain of salt for that memory sing along. Number 11, The Super Mario Bros. Movie. This is where I have to establish my Nord bias. Is it basic as a film? Yeah, is it too quickly paced to a detriment? Absolutely. However, was it a fun ride seeing how they adapted all these classic characters and settings into a film? Definitely. Plus, with the soundtrack and beautiful animation shown off here, the Mario side of my brain happily they went wahoo, and that's all I wanted. But please don't show me this one again for at least a few more years. Every time I see it again, it bugs me a little bit more, and I don't want to become a hater yet. I am not in that era. Number 10, Winnie the Pooh. This one is really stretching my memory. I don't remember it the best, but I remember it better than Iron Man, and it's Winnie the Pooh. It's sweet and charming, plus I can say I saw Disney's last 2D animated film when you likely didn't. So it's a winner in my book. Number 9, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Nord Bias Strikes Again. It's too long, and the human stuff isn't the best, but with every rewatch, that wedding scene somehow becomes funnier, it has more complexion than Mario, and it's a direct adaptation of a classic Sonic game. So as a Sonic fan, it was well worth it. Number 8, Avengers Endgame. Now, was it the smartest idea to watch this when, at the time, I hadn't seen the majority of the MCU? <laughs> no. 
But man, what a theatrical event. Those three hours went by and I still think it's a really good closing chapter to the Infinity Saga or whatever it's called. It's a good film, even if it's more of an experience than anything else. Number 7, Wonka. Listen, I get it. The marketing was all over the place and Chalamet initially seemed like he was picked for being a celebrity more than a good Wonka. After seeing it though, I think this movie is just delightful. Paul King really knows how to make whimsy and the whole world established here is filled with that charming kid-like wonder. The musical numbers are inventive and catchy and Chalamet was actually excellent in how he's just one big Seattle kid with enough guilt quotes for me to believe he is Willy Wonka. Besides the murdering kids thing, I, that doesn't really make sense with his version so I guess as a prequel it fails, but I enjoyed it. Number 6, the Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water. I'm not sure what the public consensus is on this one, but as a Spongebob fan at the time and even now, I think it's great. It's a lot. They put probably way too much into this one, but compared to what the show was putting out at the time, it was night and day. It was really funny, heartfelt, it looked lovely, and I just think it's great. I don't care what you think, I love you Tom Kenny. Number 5, Bobby. First film I saw on opening day, baby. For being both a giant ad for Barbies, a wacky comedy, and a film about society and womanhood as a whole, I think it mostly manages to balance itself out. It feels like a parody most of the time, and I got to respect when brands allow themselves to be fun. It's pretty much everything in one, and I appreciate that. This is embarrassing. Number 4, Spider-Man No Way Home. Nord Bias walks wonders here. Yes, this was on rewatch, and yes, it was very much designed to be a theatrical event first, but I don't care. I'll defend this in John Watts' whole trilogy with my life. They are great coming of age films, and this one manages to be a bunch of fan service alongside tying everything all together. So I love it. Marvelous job. Sue me. Number 3, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Recency biased, and I saw this for four dollars, biased, see, dawned. This is an excellent film. It's funny, heartfelt, it looks so ugly, it's beautiful, it's stylish in every aspect. It could very well be dated in a few years time, some of that dialogue already starting to feel like it, but for now, it works marvels for me. Really adore this one. Number 2, Paddington 2. Guys, school got one right. What a marvelous film! The 99% on Rotten Tomatoes is well deserved. Like the definition of a flawless film. I can't find one thing to complain about. It's charming. It's funny. It's so wholesome. Like I can't see how you could hate this one. It served its purpose and went beyond that. Can't wait for the sword one and anything else Paul King does. Which, by the way, here's my pitch. The Muppets. Listen, this man loves his gimmicky ensembles and the Muppets are a whole group of them. And they'll answer promorphic sings. Listen, it's a match made in heaven, so just call me if you want more ideas, alright? I expect my royalty check to come in tomorrow. And of course, number one. Now, it wasn't an easy choice. Actually, it was. It's Across the Spider-Verse. Easily, no contest. I mean, come on, Doolittle was on the list, y'all! It perfected everything it needed to, solving not only as an excellent Spider-Man story, but a Miles story, a Gwen story, and a movie in general. The animation, perfect. The story, perfect. The comedy, the soundtrack, that cliffhanger, absolutely perfect. Putting aside all the real different versions and the terrible walking conditions, seemingly, what an excellent film and theatrical experience. And I can't wait for Beyond, even if we actually have to wait, huh? Anyways, what do y'all think of the list? Did I let my Nord bias affect it too much? Should I actually watch real cinema? Will Sonic the Hedgehog 3 skyrocket to the top later this year? Should Doolittle have been higher? <laughs> Funnily enough, I already know the answer to that one would be no.